So that's why they say education is important. Stay in school, kids. Because you don't want to be an adult not learning how to read and write. They were like, you need to cash your check. You can't even sign your own signature because you didn't do that while you was in school by not paying attention and goofing off and being a clown. That's why they say education is key to success and truly not learning how to read and write is going to be one of your downfalls when you're an adult. So stay in school, kids. Pay attention to your teachers. They are there to help make you succeed and push you through life. Tell me you love me, baby. Oh, that's the sweet sound. Tell me how much you need me. Make my world go round. Ain't no competition. No one can compare. Ba Hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm back with another segment of who is that 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 and today's person on the list we have wallace wally amos jr if any of y'all do not know who this man was to you better go check out a box of cookies <laughs> we are talking about the founder and creator of famous amos cookies the ones that's in the striped blue and yellow box. Yes, yes, yes. You got the chocolate ones and the chocolate pecans. Or pecans, as people would say. So, yes, yes, yes. If y'all watching this far, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Turn your post notifications. That way you'll be notified when I post. Comment down below any more who is you want to see next. And, yeah, let's get this rolling. So, Wallace Wally Amos Jr. was born July 1st. 1936. He was an American TV personality, entrepreneur, and author from Tallahassee, Florida. He is the founder of the famous Amos chocolate chip cookie, the Cookie Kahlua, and Aunt Della's Cookies Gourmet Cookie Brands, and was the host of the adult reading program, Learn to Read. I did not know that. I really did not know that. Amos was born and raised in Tallahassee, Florida until he was 12 years old. Which, when his parents divorced, he moved to Manhattan, New York. New York, stand up. I constantly see like New York is the staple, and I'm glad to be a born resident of New York. Yes, yes, the Big Apple. But anyway, let's get back onto this. Like, oh my God. And he lived with his aunt where he was enrolled at the Food Trades Vocational High School. Hmm. He shows his interest in cooking at a young age. It was from it was from his aunt Della Bryant who would bake cookies for him that Amos later developed his chocolate chip cookie recipe. Okay. Thank you, Auntie. Amos improved on his aunt Della's recipe, which was already uncommon because it included several ingredients not generally associated with chocolate chip. Okay. Grandma was making her own batches of stuff before he got out there in the world. Okay. Shortly before graduating, Amos dropped out of high school to join the United States Air Force. He served at Hickman Air Force Base on Honolulu, Hawaii from 1954 until 1953. So he served like three years. He earned his high school equivalency diploma before being honorably discharged from the military. Okay, he still got an education. Okay, that's great. Returning to New York City, Amos went to college to become a secretary after graduating. Took a mailroom clerk job with the Williams Morris Agency. Eventually, he became the agency's first African-American talent agent. Whoa, that is impressive. Back in those days, yes. Uh, that's very high up there. He signed Simon and Garfunkel. Wow. And headed the agency's rock and roll department. <gasps> Whoa. Impressive. Amos attracted clients by sending them chocolate chip cookies along with an invitation to visit. So, so that's why when people do shows or whatever, they still give out gift baskets to show their appreciation and love. That is amazing. Like, oh my God, I'm just, oh my God, I'm stoked. Let me, let's continue. 
He represented musicians such as Diana Ross and the Supremes, Sam Cooke, and Marvin Gaye. Those are some heavy hitters in the music industry, till, still to this day. Wow. Wow. I'm mind blown. But let's continue. In 1975, a friend suggested to Amos that he set up a store to sell his cookies. And in March of that year, the first Amos, famous Amos cookie store opened in Los Angeles, California. Why you could open it up in New York? <laughs> but anyways, we gonna take it. He started the business with the help of a $25,000 loan from Marvin Gaye and Helen Redley. Okay. The company began to expand and eventually famous Amos chocolate chip cookies could be found on the supermarket shelves across the United States. Yes, I'm going to go probably pick a meal box tomorrow. Yes, honey. He became such a known figure culturally that he had appeared... Adds himself in the taxi episode of Lock Lock Cuz Cookies in 1981. That's probably why I never heard of it because it was before my time. Thanks in part of to the success of his cookie company, he was hired to deliver speeches. He has written ten books, okay, many of which have a self help theme, including the Cookie Never Crumbles. Now that's a good line that I heard throughout my time. And the power in you. In 1979, Amos' longtime friend and publicist John Rochia introduced him to Literacy Volunteers of America. Okay. Amos had Amos had advocated literacy and helped thousands of adults learn to read. Trust me, if you don't know how to read before you're an adult, it's going to be a struggle when you are an adult and you can't learn. You don't know how to read and write. So that's why they say education is important. Stay in school, kids. Because you don't want to be an adult not learning how to read and write. They were like, you need to cash your check. You can't even sign your own signature because you didn't do that while you was in school by not paying attention and goofing off and being a clown. That's why they say education is key to success and truly not learning how to read and write is going to be one of your downfalls when you're an adult. So stay in school, kids. Pay attention to your teachers. They are there to help make you succeed and push you through life. You might not think so when you're younger, but when you get older, you're going to be like, wow, they were just doing what was best for me and have my best interest at heart. Stay in school, kids. Let's go. So... <laughs> Yeah. In 1987, he also hosted a television series designed to teach others how to read, entitled Learn to Read. I remember seeing that program. I did, I did. Produced by Kentucky Educational TV and WXYZ TV. Due to financial troubles, Amos was forced to sell the famous Amos company, and because the name Famous Amos was trademarked by his former company, he had to use the Uncle No Name's comp cookie company as his new company name. A famous Amos distributor at the time, Lou Arvernon, heard Amos on a local radio show and inspired by Amos' story of his early business success with Famous Amos and his spirit contacted Amos with the idea for starting a new business. In 1994, the two became partners and subsequently launched Uncle No Name Gourmet Muffins. The company focused on fat-free nutritional muffins at that time. Okay. Uncle No Name became Uncle Wally's Muffin Company in 1999. The muffins are sold in no, in more than 3,500 3, stores nationwide. i never seen them, but I might have to check it out. In 2014, an article in Fortune magazine la lauded the cookie comeback of famous Wally Amos as Amos thought Amos brought back his handmade cookies under a new name, the Cookie Kahuna. Oh, so it makes sense. Okay. These cookies were marketed in a store in Hawaii where Famous is based, where Amos is based. Okay. They came come up in flavors, original chocolate chip Cookie, girl, I'm not, see, <laughs> reading too fast, I know how to read it right, but still, reading too fast 
make me miss up my words. So, they come in the flavors original chocolate chip, chocolate chip with pecans, and butterscotch with macadamia nuts. I have not tasted the butterscotch ones, but I'm going to try to find them and taste them and try them out. In 2019, Amos was called the king of cookies by NBC affiliate KSNV TV in Las Vegas. Okay. In 19, 1979, Amos married Christine Amos Harris, who later helped him design early merchandise and packaging for the famous Amos Cookies. Okay. One of the Amos children is musician Sean Amos. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to insert this picture here. It says, Wally Amos takes children on a reading adventure during Spring Fest, an event that celebrates children during the month of military child on Naval Station Pearl Harbor in April 21st, 2007. Hmm. Okay. Amos had lived in Hawaii from 1977 up until 2018. Amos currently resides in Columbia, South Carolina, where he is working on Aunt Della's cookies. Okay, go ahead. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Go ahead, Wally Amos. I'm so glad and thankful for your, you and your Aunt Della for creating such a wonderful cookie. Like, I wish they would make it like into a soft version. Even though the hard ones are good, like a soft version would be good too. Like, oh, yes. Thank you, Wally Amos, for all that you have done. I am glad that I got to read up on more about you, not just about you creating cookies, the history of how it all began, what you did after you did cookies. We went to the military. That was just impressive. Like, I'm proud to be, like, a fan of such a wonderful man who created such wonderful cookies. Like, and he's still doing this to this day. So, that is awesome. So, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this Who Is That Dot segment of Wally, Wallace Wally Amos Jr., the creator and founder of Famous Amos Cookies. So, guys, if y'all like this, please give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, please give it a big thumbs down. The choice is yours. Comment down below any more of these that you would like to see from me. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. That way you'll be notified when I post. And until next time, we are out of here. Peace.